The purple head speed sensor has been out there for more than a year now. So it was time for a software facelift. In this video I show you the new features available in IoT T-Stick version 162, along with some more tips and tricks that will help you with speed profiling your entire locomotive fleet. Welcome to the IoT T channel, I am Hans Tanner. A special welcome to all new subscribers and welcome back to everyone else. I am happy to see you back here. Just in case you are not familiar with the purple head sensor, here is a quick overview of the functionality. A pair of small magnets is mounted to the axle of the core. A three-axis magnetic sensor above the axle and inside the core is used to measure the rotation of the magnetic field and hence of the axle. The rotation angle multiplied by the circumference of the wheel results in the travel distance and, when divided by the time, the travel speed, which is continuously displayed. An automated function repeats the measuring process for every speed step and the resulting speed profile is used to set up the speed table. As a result, every locomotive of a fleet has a programmable and predictable scale speed for every given speed step. Now, this is not a new process, but the purple head sensor allows to cut the time needed for profiling one locomotive down to about a minute or so. And if you want to know more about the purple head sensor, watch some of the videos from the playlist referenced in the description below. With the latest revision of the software, I have fixed all known bugs and implemented some features that were requested by viewers. So let's have a look at each tab and let me show you what has changed. The first thing you will notice when opening the setup tab is a series of color setting tables. There is one table for every graph display of the following tabs and each table has color selector fields for setting the background color and the line color of each display curve. To set the color, click on the selector and use the mouse to change the color as desired. When done, close the dialog and the color selector field will show the newly selected color. As always on the IoT stick, click Save and Restart to write your settings to the flash memory. The second change to the setup tab is the measure button next to the wheel diameter field. Setting the correct wheel diameter is paramount for precise measurement of the travel distance. Unfortunately, with many cars, getting access to the wheel and correctly measure the diameter is not that easy. So I was looking for a smarter way to do it and that is to simply push the car for a defined distance and then calculate the wheel diameter based on that. To do that, click the measure button and enter the desired travel distance in the push distance field of the dialog. Note that the input must be in millimeters, so if you measure in inches, you have to multiply by 25.4. Then align the core to a known point, click the start button and push the core manually to the end of the defined distance. Hold it steady and click submit and the wheel diameter will automatically be calculated and displayed. To minimize measurement errors it is best to push the core over a minimum distance of about 4 or 5 wheel turns. Also here, click Save and Restart to make the new settings permanent. You can then use the Track Data tab to verify the measurement over a longer distance. On my N-Scale layout I use a 1 meter test track and the measured distance is typically between 995 and 1005 millimeters, so an error of plus minus 0.5% of the measured distance. If your measuring error is more than that, you can manually adjust the wheel diameter setting to get closer to the true distance. The Track Data tab looks the same as in the previous version. 
The only thing I have changed here is enabling the fields for grade and super elevation of the track. The data comes from the internal IMU of the IoT TSTIC and unfortunately is not very precise. However, I decided to display it anyway and I hope it might be useful in some cases. What you may notice is the reduced latency on the display of the speed. This is the result of an improved algorithm to measure and calculate the travel distance based on the axle rotation. With the new algorithm, it takes less time to display zero speed once the car comes to a stop and overall the displayed speed is more timely than in the previous version of the IoT TSTIC software. Then there is the new analysis tab. You probably have noticed that most locomotives when set to a specific speed step are not really moving with a constant speed. Sometimes they go a little bit slower, sometimes they go a little bit faster. This new tab allows for analyzing these intracyclical speed changes. What it does is constantly displaying the average speed for different time intervals. The first curve shows the average speed of the last 250 milliseconds. The second curve displays the average speed of the last full second and curve number 3 shows the average speed of the last 5 seconds. All three curves are updated 4 times per second with the new rolling average value. In a perfect world with a perfectly performing locomotive, all three curves would show a straight line of the same value. For a real locomotive though, this will never be the case. What you will see is a certain fluctuation of the 250 millisecond value as the short time average speed changes constantly. The 5 second average on the other hand tends to show a horizontal line. The interesting curve is the 1 second average. If the motor of the locomotive is performing well, this tends to be a straight line as well. If the locomotive on the other hand has significant intracyclical changes, the 1 second average tends to become periodical. Comparing the three lines gives you an indication of the quality of the motor. Another interesting topic is analyzing the impact of speed stabilization. In this curve, we see the speed behavior of a locomotive first with speed stabilization off and later with speed stabilization on. As we can see, the resulting end speed for a given speed step is higher if speed stabilization is off. On the other hand, after changing the travel direction, the adaptation to the new speed is, is much slower because the decoder is not temporarily increasing the power to adjust to the new speed command. Quite interesting and I think much more insights can be gained by analyzing these curves, but try for yourself. The speed magic tab looks the same at first glance, but there are some improvements underneath the surface. The first is loading JMRI roster data or throttle profiles. In previous versions, if you reloaded a file that was already loaded, it was simply refreshed from the cache memory. This is no longer the case. In the current version, an XML file gets reloaded from the disk every time you use the load JMRI or load profile button and select a file from the file dialog. So if you make changes to a roster file and then reload it into the Speedmagic tab, the data truly gets replaced. The second area of improvement is the analysis of technical speed profiles. You can no longer select between 28 and 128 speed step mode, but the granularity of the test depends on the current speed step. For lower speeds, every single step is tested, while for higher speeds, the speed between two tests is increased by five steps and the curve in between them is interpolated. This allows for a very accurate measurement for slow movements and a much faster test proceeding once the speed is higher. Furthermore, I introduced some linear smoothing of the measured results so that outliers in the data have less impact on the resulting speed curve. 
The last change in this section is the availability of the Save JMRI file button. In previous versions of the software, this button was only available when using the Viceroutle interface. In the current version, this button can also be used when using Speedmagic in Loconet mode. So in any case, you can just store the speed table data in a JMRI roster file without having to program it directly from the Speedmagic tab. A rather small change, but it adds to the flexibility of the tool. And that concludes my overview on the changes to the software. So let's move on to some tips and tricks based on user feedback. If I hear about problems from users, they normally fall into one of two categories. Installation of the sensor or preparation of the decoder for profiling. The most important point when installing the purple hat is to make sure that the whole sensor is located directly above the axle of the car. The magnetic field gets weaker with distance, so the closer the sensor is to the magnet, the more reliable the measurement will be. Make sure you set the sensor orientation in the setup tab to flat or upright, depending on the way your purple hat board is oriented. And if you decide to cut the sensor board into two halves, make sure that all the soldering joints are properly conducting. If you want to verify that the sensor board is working properly, you can simply hook up the IoT stick to a serial monitor, for example from the Arduino IDE, and verify the output of the boot sequence of the IoT stick. Watch for an entry reading load train side sensor followed by a string initialized TMAC 5273. If there is no OOPS message following that string, the initialization of the sensor was successful. You can now manually push the car for about a foot or so, and you will get two lines of flow adjustment messages. This is the internal calibration of the sensor, indicating that the magnetic field was detected and the measurement of the rotation angle is working as intended. For more tips and tricks about the installation of the purple hat board, you may want to read the instructions on the myiott.org webpage listed below. To prepare a decoder for speed profiling, there are four groups of CV settings that I suggest you verify. The first group is the acceleration and deceleration settings defined by CVs 3 and 4. Make sure to set both values to zero to allow for an instant reaction of the locomotive to speed step changes. Next, we have to make sure that the locomotive has a linear speed curve and that it can reach the technical maximum speed. The most common way to achieve that is to set the start, mid and max voltage of the decoder. Check your decoder manual to see what values make for a linear speed curve. On some decoders, like for example my Digitrex DC121, you set all values to zero to achieve that. Other decoders require settings of zero, 128 and 255 to achieve the same goal. Alternatively, you can also program a linear speed table and set forward and backward trim to the maximum value. Again, check your decoder manual for the correct trim value settings. Some older decoders require a trim value of 255 for 100% output, while others have a 100% trim effect when the value is set to 128. The next thing I verify is that the locomotive has some movement on speed step 1. If it does not move, then there is normally a kickstart value CV that you can increase to help breaking loose the rotor at low speed steps. Check your decoder manual to see what CV it is and carefully increase the value and verify that the locomotive starts moving. The final group of CV values I check are the speed stabilization settings. If you plan on using speed stabilization for your locomotive, it is best to have it activated during the speed profiling process. As we have seen when reviewing the new analysis tab, 
Activation of speed stabilization impacts the maximum speed of the locomotive at a given speed step. Therefore, analyzing a speed profile without stabilization and activate it later will obsolete the programmed speed table. Once these values are set, you are ready to run speed magic to analyze the technical speed profile of your locomotive and generate a speed table and make it match the resulting scale speed to your throttle settings. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and you are motivated to try the new features of the Purple Hat software. If so, please click the like button below to let me know or let others know about your speed profiling experiences in the comment section of this video. And if you are interested in this kind of content, do not forget to subscribe to the IOTT channel and click the bell icon so you will always be among the first to know when a new video hits the tube. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.